the race for a truly dominant portable watercraft has always existed. It's so saturated with choices that it really just comes down to preference. So what do you value? Comfort, functionality, portability, or perhaps you're so bold as to want a craft that can do it all. If such a craft existed, it would be invaluable. But does it exist? Hey, before we get too far into this video, a big part of what made this whole project possible was the Autoboat system, which is a universal adapter for all small basic trolling motors. Anything from kayaks to small plastic boats to John boats. If a transit mount trolling motor fits on it, you can have GPS technology like anchoring, nav heading, routes. Example for this kayak, I got a motor mount from Yak Gadget and stuck that Minn Kota Endure on it, put the Autoboat system on it, and I'm ready to go. I have a GPS capable kayak. The current GPS capable kayaks out there on the market today are extremely expensive and there are very few of them. But none of that matters now because any kayak with a center pedal drive that can fit a trolling motor through it can now become GPS capable. And it's a game changer. I'm sitting here lounging, catching fish, having a good time, not worrying once if I'm gonna get beached or get pushed into the reeds. I'm anchored out there perfectly on spot. And all I did was replace that center drive motor with an auto boat and a basic trolling motor from Walmart. All the other GPS capable trolling motors on the market range anywhere from $12 to $1,500 for the most basic, all the way up to $5,000 for the most advanced. Well, that's not the case for Justin here. He just slammed his old trolling motor right on there, stuck the auto boat on it, and now look at him. My favorite thing about this system is that it was made for tiny boats. So many people will be able to experience GPS capable technology on their watercraft for the first time because of this unit, how easy it is to install, the simplicity, and all the added features. So if you got that old transit mount trolling motor sitting in the back of your garage, time to dust that thing off and slap an autoboat unit on it. You can find them on our website, tbnation.net. Just search autoboat and it'll pop right up. I live among one of the most popular bodies of water in the country, 60 to 100 miles of river chain, if you want to take it that far. It's great, but then it gets congested real quickly, the more it warms. And as it gets warmer and more crowded, there's nothing I won't do to get away from it. Most people think Arizona is nothing but a desert, but with just a few hours from my place, you can be in something like this. It is a unique experience I can't get on my home lake, but in an effort to enjoy it, there has to be sacrifices. I have to accommodate my family, all of them. In short, that means I can't tow my main boat all the way down here, because I have to tow this thing. So where does that leave me? It's a good problem to have, but one that must be solved, and believe me I've tried. They were impressive, but they couldn't hit all marks. Not like this boat. Sure, it's plastic and borderline cheap looking in some places, but what it does, it does beautifully. Its strength to weight ratio is unmatched for what it can do at stock. It's not just portable, it's tolerable to transport this way. It can be done on a kayak dolly, fully loaded with all your gear in the boat. And it can be done with just one person. Stock from the factory, it's more capable than any watercraft its size. Why it is the only one out there like it, I have no idea. Because it's not like companies out there aren't truly capable of making them. There are companies that make exceptional kayaks, skiffs, and small watercraft. But this one is truly the first of its kind. And the difference between this company and the others is simply a way of thinking. And one day we will see that way of thinking shift and these extraordinary companies will put out truly exceptional boats just like this. But for today, this one reigns supreme. You couldn't even build one like this, lighter or for cheaper. Not even me. And so you know the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them.
Doesn't look half bad for a two-day binge build. I, mean, I had no time to test this, and that is the only thing that worries me, because everything looks good in theory. Everything should work. I've done this enough to where it shouldn't fail. But there's always that chance that it might, and there's nothing I can do about it if it does. The most impressive thing about this boat is not that I just kicked it off my truck bed like this, or that it's portable, or only 12 feet, or fits inside a toy hauler. It's what you can do with it once it's on the water. Very unhappy that you caught him. Woo. Hey, my chatterbait! No! Smoking it. Maybe that's the lure to get, dude. Okay. If he stops wiggling. Oh, he's off. Yeah. He's off. You got my hook? No, he didn't. Oh. No, you're good. We're on the noggin. He smoked it. Throw him back in. Still a good fish. Oh shit, shit, he's out, he's out, he's out. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, sweet. Dude, look at that. He's got, he got. Yeah, foul hook. No, that's not a foul hook. That's a claw from like a hawk. You see that? Yeah. How crazy that is? He, he must have got hooked and then got out. All right. You just keep evading death, Trout. Having this been my second light skiff and then doing a binge build on two days to make all these extra mods to it, was it worth it? Absolute. I have both black boxes inside this front compartment, one for the live scope and the other one for the auto boat system. It was extremely easy to rig this boat and run wires. The walls inside the boat are really wide and it's very easy to even stick your hand down there and run most of them. And then the rest of you might just maybe need a fish tape but it's overall very doable for the average Joe to run wiring from the front compartments all the way down here to the back. We ended up using that Epic battery in the back. I cut off the little bottom tab so it would fit just flush underneath that compartment and that is an IP67 rated battery, which is good because back there water flows in and out of that back section and I don't have to worry about it. It also froze for two nights in a row and this battery was unaffected. It has so much technology inside that battery, it's insane. Also a huge shout out to Railblazer. They sent me a ton of stuff, which I pretty much outfitted all their stuff on my primary boat. But this one I've been saving specifically for the light skiff. This is their like forward facing sonar mount. It's specifically made for smaller watercraft like kayaks or skiffs with a flat deck like this one because it's super low profile. And it will fold up and stuff right inside that bag. And they have what's called a hex mount. This thing, which comes right on and off at will, but is extremely strong when it is fastened. Because it's all plastic, I was a little skeptical about it, but when I had it on full force, I was going about four miles an hour with that trolling motor, and there was no buckle or bowing or any distortion to the actual sonar read when I was trolling at higher speeds with it. This does and deploys really well. It's a little bulky and out there, but I guess that would just be on an application to application basis where you actually put it on your watercraft. The trolling motor setup was a key component and the entire thing with the auto boat system. I also made a mod at the very front of this 55 pound Minn Cutter Endura C2 to make the stone deploy mechanism flip the other way. That way I could attach it to a pull cord. And, and with that mod alone, plus the auto boat, this whole basic thing actually stowed and deployed way better than like a Tarova. 
with iPilot Link. It's like has all the features of say an XI3 or a power drive, actually more if you wanna get real technical since you can control all the additional features like fishing spots and routes without needing a fish finder to do that. And it's way lighter and streamlined and out of the way than anything you can get for a bow mount trolling motor. There is nothing out there GPS capable for a trolling motor that is that slick and streamlined and light and completely out of the way. I mean, a power drive and an XI3, they kind of come close, but they're still way bulkier and way more of a pain to install on small watercraft like this. And they're also way more expensive and do less. And if we're being intellectually honest about the entire thing, Minn Kota's GPS technology is supreme. It is the best out there. So we can actually beat theirs in terms of pinpoint accuracy, but we come extremely close and it's just hands down way easier and more adaptable to install on pretty much any small watercraft. Most small watercraft have a bow mount mod like this, I had to make this one for the light skiff, but this is one of the very few plastic boats out there that don't have a front transom mod that you can just do this. And for kayakers, I know you guys are getting those three, four, five thousand dollar mega kayaks, and you're voiding the warranty of the hole immediately by drilling holes to modify for a bow mount. But if you go to yakgadget.com, they more or less have a bunch of center drive drop ins specifically for a transit mount trolling motor to convert. And that's before the autoboat system even came out. But now that we have it, I mean, an Old Town Sportsman, I think that for sure is the kayak to beat in terms of the motorized kayaks out there with GPS technology. But you can more or less make your kayak on par with that by just getting one of these. This is my personal kayak, a Phil Free Dorado. I actually really like this one. It gets a lot of hate, but to me, I mean, it's pretty nice. But I liked it a hundred times more after I got rid of the overdrive, you know, the pedal system, and I stuck that trolling motor in there. But if you're talking about stability for small watercraft, the technology to make these kayaks as slim as this really stable is there. This Dorado is really stable. But my chief complaint about kayaks is that other than you're gonna get wet no matter what, it's just you get owned in the wind real bad and they turn like a bus. The maneuverability of kayaks has like little to be desired. I know there's tricks and flaws around it, but I'm telling you with a 360 motor in the middle that you can control the remote, it's uh, a whole different game. Done. Those problems are gone. If sitting in a nice comfortable chair all the time did it for me, I totally would probably just rock a kayak. But the fact is, there so. is no mega kayak out there that can fish two people like this, this effectively, or you can just stay dry, where the hull is a planing hull if you want it to be, where you can accommodate all these things, just like you would on an actual high-performance fishing boat, versus making all kinds of crazy extra mods just to make it work on a kayak. Yep. You can do this with a jumbo, but it's going to be way more expensive, and there's no way you're going to one-wheel that thing into a truck bed without like two very strong people. To build it up this way, how it is in a side of John Boat is a very expensive and time consuming process. And all of you who are part of the Tiny Boat Nation community know that. Got a lot of hate for the plastic hull, but would you know that there are more and more HDPE tough boats are out there because during drop tests, they are the most impact resistant with the least damage after they drop them off of a building or a crane or whatever. And lastly, there's a reason why they call it the light skiff. It's something else. I'll tell you what, guys. Anyways, that's what I got. This camping trip's over. Back to the grind. I'll see you guys out in the next video.